G'day guys, it's Geordie here from Neighbourhood. Have you ever wanted to import contacts into HubSpot but didn't know where to start? Perhaps you're transitioning between CRMs or you've just wrapped up an event and want to add attendees into your customer base. Well today, we're gonna to show you exactly how to do just that. As a heads up, this applies to all hubs to use this feature. If you're keen on more practical support inside HubSpot, Neighbourhood offer a comprehensive, easy to follow course so you're making the most out of HubSpot. Stay tuned for more info at the end of this video. If you want to take your learning offline though, we'll include a downloadable PDF in the description below. So to do your import, what you want to do is jump into HubSpot. Up here when you're in contacts, you'll see the import button here. If I click on that, you can click start and import here. If I click on start and import, you can download your sample spreadsheet if you haven't um, uploaded anything into HubSpot before. What that's gonna semi look like is, this is one I prepared earlier with all of the columns here are the, uh, the properties inside HubSpot. So first name, last name, their role name, job title, email. That's the most important part for contacts. So for contacts when you're uploading them, email is the most important. For companies, the most important is the domain then HubSpot will automatically associate anything to do with this email to Angela here and this contact. Um, same for companies. Say if um, these are a little bit gibberish here because they're all dummy data. But say if that granar.com was a real company, um, then anything to do with that domain of granar.com, any contact would be associated with that company inside HubSpot. So, you can add in all your custom ones. If you have custom properties you've gone and built previously, add those columns in there and fill out the data. Or if you're bringing this from another platform, there's a good chance when you export it from that platform, this is the format it's gonna uh, give it to you. But again, the most important thing for this is email. If you don't have an email in there, um, there's a chance of um, uploading duplicate contacts, as well as you're not gonna be able to email them from within HubSpot or use them as effectively as you should. So we've got our sheet here. If we go back into HubSpot, then we're importing a file from the computer. You can do an opt-out list if you're uploading a marketing list of people you don't want to send emails to, or from um, objects or um, integrations there. So we're doing a file from computer here. We've just got the one file. If you have multiple files, you can bring them all together through multiple files. We're just doing the one object, object being a contact, a, contact, a, a company or a deal. We're just uploading just contacts, so we're just gonna do that. Then you've got the option here of choosing what you want to upload. So if you go to contacts, then we're gonna choose the file. Example upload sheet. That just processes quickly. You'll see here this question here of, uh, you can update existing contacts with this file. This file includes a contact ID column. That's used if you have exported out of HubSpot and you've exported all of their contact IDs, um, that way it'll upload those contacts. One thing, however, with contacts, um, it really works well where if you upload everyone's emails, if it in that file recognizes that email as an existing contact, it will upload all that information and update that contact automatically. So you don't need the contact ID in this case. Click on next. Then we've got all of these um, properties here. This is where we do the mapping. So. Here, that's first name, all of those. That's a contact property. You can choose, don't import that column and it won't import that. Or if I choose, if it hasn't mapped it properly, which it actually has for all of these, which is great. But this one, I just said don't import. Click on contact properties, and then you can search for that property within HubSpot. So I know this is first name, so I can click on that. And if that property doesn't exist already in HubSpot, you can create a new property there and you go through the create a new property process. But I know that one exists already. Then this last column is don't override existing value. So if the contact already exists in HubSpot based on their email, let's say Angela here, if I click don't override existing value, that means that for Angela's there, because she exists in HubSpot, it won't update her first name there. So if that already exists in HubSpot, it won't update it or override it. So we can go through here. This little error here is just saying that um, all of these ones here, there's an error in this column because in particular, all these ones have got dashes. They should be blank, but I've accidentally left them as dashes. That one is the only one that'll work. Because I know there's gonna be lots of errors, I can upload fix import errors. 
can click through and you can have a look at them and sometimes it'll give you the option to update that. But in this case, because I know that opportunity was the only one in that whole uh, document, I'm just gonna say don't import column and I'll go and I'll update that later on. So we scroll down here, we've gone through and checked everything, everything lines up, we click on next. Then you wanna name your import. So I'm gonna add in today's date. And then you can create a list. So you can access this list of people immediately inside HubSpot. So you can start sending them emails or access that immediately. Then with GDPR, you have to choose the legal basis for processing and contacts data. This is just a, a slight protection to stop people from uploading um, bought lists and things like that. But let's just say these are our existing customers that we're uploading into the system. Then we can finish the import. Then this is going to process. It's quite a large file, so it can take a little while. And you'll get a notification that appears up here um, to let you know when that's done. Alternatively, you can go and do whatever you want inside HubSpot, continue on working or uploading other things, and you can come back here and you'll see now this is complete. There's that notification. So if I just give that a quick refresh, just to get all the data, you'll see here that it said there's 9,749 new contacts. If there was some of those emails that already existed in HubSpot and it was updating records and updating contacts, you'd have a number here. Or if there were errors in here, so say if an email um, was misspelled with say .com, C-O-N, HubSpot doesn't recognize that as a valid email, so it'll come up as an error. Or if there's spelling mistakes or, um, or if there's spaces in it, just different formats for uh, emails, HubSpot doesn't recognize as valid, so they come up as errors. Important, you'll see with these ones in particular, there were errors on those previous ones. If I click on more and then go download error file, you'll get a file that'll actually tell you what those errors are. You can fix those errors and then re-upload that file in. Alternatively here, you can go view contacts, view that contacts list, or create a list based on these people or for previous ones, then go create list. What I'm gonna do here is view contacts. And it's gonna take me to view all of them in, in the system, adding the filter. So if that import is up, and there's all our contacts we've uploaded with all that data we uploaded as well. And there you have it. You now know how to import contacts inside of HubSpot. If you're wanting to make the most out of HubSpot, Neighborhood offer a step-by-step -step course covering marketing, sales, service, and CMS hub in depth, ensuring you and your team are best serving your customers while developing efficient internal processes. We'll include a link for this below. As well, if you gain value from this video or are keen to learn more about HubSpot, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you're after a PDF version of this for later or you're passing it on to a teammate in need, we'll include a link in the description.